Replacements for things like bourbon and gin and tequila that have no alcohol in them yet still emulate their flavors are all over the place. And as popular as they have become, or at least as ubiquitous as they have become, I haven't seen a liquor company take the same interest in it for the sake of using their name to sell a no ABV product. That is, until I found these. Today we'll be looking at the Martini and Rossi no ABV aperitifs on today's episode of Mike's Hard Reviews. Hey there, Heather Hother. My name is Michael. I'm a bartender from Kalamazoo, Michigan. I do not know where all that energy came from, but nonetheless, we are here today to talk about two very interesting products that I found uh, on my most recent trip to the store, uh, Martini and Rossi no ABV aperitifs. So like I said, spirit, spirit alternatives, I guess, no ABV spirits are all over the place. Um, you can find them in most, I think most liquor stores probably have a section dedicated to them. And then most grocery stores actually I found have a section dedicated to them, which is fascinating um, because typically they don't reach for things that you would qualify as like artisanal or like uh, micro distilled, micro brewed, very niche products. Yeah, for some reason they have stuff like this. And until now, I had never seen a company come about making a no proof, like a no ABV anything uh, that already existed as an alcohol manufacturing company. So when I went past the liquor section at my local Meyer, I saw these and I thought, well, shit, now I have to try it. <laughs> these are Martini and Rossi no ABV aperitifs. An aperitif is a sort of bitter pre-meal sipping uh, spirit, it's meant to be done like either uh, on the uh, on the rocks, you know, or maybe even neat if you're very, very interested in what is typically a very bitter spirit. Um, and then additionally, uh, as an ingredient in cocktails. For example, um, I have a couple other bottles here that are um, products that do have alcohol in them, um, Campari and Aperol. These have got to be the two most common uh, aperitifs on the market. Both of them are from Italy. Both of them are citrusy orange type flavors. Campari is more bitter. It's more like orange peels. Aperol is more like candy orange. These all exist in the same class of spirit. The only difference between them is that these have no alcohol, whereas these do. And the thing that's fa fascinating about that idea to me is that I think that aperitifs are the perfect place to do this, this so this whole no ABV spirit thing, because those aperitifs, the Campari and the Aperol, are only like 14 and 28% alcohol by volume, you know, depending on which one you look at. There's not a lot of room for alcohol to play a role in the profile of the spirit. Like the thing about alternative bourbons and gins is that you've got to emulate the flavor of alcohol and then also everything that went into making it. In the case of bourbon or like whiskey in general, it's oak impact and then the grain distillates. In the case of gin, it's the botanicals used in the distillation process. And it doesn't come out the same without the high alcohol content necessary to introduce those flavors. Here though, these products are designed to carry flavor at a low alcohol content. So removing it seems to me to be the best way to go about making a no alcohol spirit by not choosing a base spirit, but instead a modifier that can be enjoyed on its own. In particular, these uh, are de-alcoholized wine products. So they're made with a wine base that has had its alcohol content evaporated off. In any case, there's no alcohol in either of these, or at least less than 0.5%. But that wine base gives me hope to think that these will be actually decent products, which is pretty uncommon for no uh, ABV spirits. So. Let's take a look at them and give them a taste and see if they suck or not. So there are two varieties of this product available on the market that I am aware of. Uh, Martini and Rossi Floreal, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, Floreale, and then uh, Vibrante. Uh, and each one of them presents a different combination of flavors. Vibrante is uh, citrus and it notes specifically extract of Italian bergamot, which makes me think this is an appropriation or uh, styling of aperitif similar to Campari. And Floreal denotes uh, botanicals and Roman chamomile, so sort of floral essence. Um, based on that and its color, I'm thinking it's trying to be Saint Germain, which is a German uh, elderflower liqueur. A less common aperitif, but one that actually can be enjoyed uh, on the rocks, albeit 
That's a very expensive drink because St. Germain is quite expensive. Funnily enough, I actually have both of the alcohol included versions of these spirits on my bar here. There's the Campari and there is the St. Germain. So what I think I'm gonna do here is taste these and see if they are similar to these products. And if they are, sort of do an AB to see how they're different and then see if these work in cocktails or not. Because there's a couple of cocktails based around their base spirit being an aperitif that I think these would work pretty okay in. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. I have a couple of Glencairn glasses here, which are generally meant for tasting, usually uh, in the context of like a whiskey or something you're trying to uh, have the capability of tasting and nosing. I'm gonna start off by tasting the Martini and Rossi the Bronte. Oh, that is not the direction I thought that was gonna go in. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Let's uh, let's put this in the glass. So notably, the color is very much like Campari. Um, in fact, if I pull it up here, looking at that, they are really, really similar, if not identical. Um, which I think I think might bode well. I'm not 100% certain. Uh, we will have to taste it and see. I'm gonna give it a quick nosing here. You know, it's fascinating. I'm I'm getting kind of like a thyme or rosemary note in the nose, um, which is not what I was expecting. Actually, you know what? I think I know what I'm detecting. <laughs> so on, on, the, on the product itself, it says de-alcoholized wine, specifically wine. And I'm thinking, okay, well, Martini and Rossi, I think they do regular wines, but they're mostly known for their vermouths. And funnily enough, just recently, we did an episode that used a Martini and Rossi vermouth, specifically, <laughs> Martini and Rossi Bianco Vermouth, which, as I smell this, is very, very similar. For anyone who's not aware, a vermouth is a fortified wine. It, it's had, it's a wine base that includes uh, botanicals and herbs and spices and things, uh, and is typically a slightly higher proof, because uh, I think it's typically made by uh, distillation rather than fermentation like wine is. That being said, the similarity in their wine bases and their botanical and like herbal spice notes makes me think that these two things must come from the same base wine product, whatever that is made out of. That, that really unimportant uh, aside complete, let's give this uh, Vibrante a taste. Oh. Oh, that's... That's not at all what I thought it was gonna be. That's lame as shit, what the hell? <laughs> Honestly, um, it tastes like very, very mild cranberry juice. Uh, with lemon extract or like lemon peel in it. It's got like this kind of light citrusiness to it that is really kind of weird. It's not bitter. Um, notably, it is actually very, very sweet, um, which is really not the point of an aperitif. Aperitifs are supposed to be bitter and bracing and make you salivate. They're supposed to be sipped. This is not only not an aperitif, this doesn't even taste like what it says it tastes like. Like bergamot orange is a bitter orange. It's the primary flavor in elderflower tea, if you need a frame of reference for it. And it's supposed to be bracing and, and, and bitter. And if it was, this would actually probably taste quite a lot like Campari, but it, it's not. And it, it, doesn't, it doesn't work. I keep sipping on it and I keep getting the nose. It's definitely like the herbs. Um, that they include in Martini and Rossi Rosso, their red vermouth, their red sweet vermouth, which is a nice smell. I like the smell. It doesn't come through on the taste at all. It's just like cranberry or like berry flavor, like generic berry flavor, and like generic citrus essence, you know, like oils of citrus. It's disappointing, if anything, honestly. I'm not, I'm not happy with this. That's not an aperitif. And frankly, that kind of sucks. Anyway, let's go ahead and move on. I don't have a lot of hopes for this Floreal now, but um, I'm thinking, you know, floral flavors are inherently more bitter and bracing and fascinating than orange and citrus, so maybe this has some legs. It smells vaguely of like Parmesan cheese. <laughs> Something about it smells kind of Parmesan-y. Um, that's probably not fair, so let's, let's just, let's, let's do this properly. <laughs> Oh yeah, you know, it's got a, it's got a similar sort of uh, herbalness to it. This is more like oregano though, less rosemary, more oregano. It's not a bad smell, but it also doesn't read as floral to me. 
Specifically, it mentions chamomile. Chamomile has a really distinct taste and smell, and I'm not getting the smell here anyway. And I'm missing anything floral. There's no, there's no honey. There's no violets. There's no roses. There's no cut grass. There's nothing. There's nothing remotely floral about this. It tastes. It smells like oregano. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe it makes up for it on the taste. Let's try that. Um. Hmm. Hold on. Um, yeah. Um, <sighs> Martini and Rossi, what are you guys doing? <laughs> I'll, I'll give it this. This one has a more bitter finish. It's very, very mild, but there is a more bitter finish to this one. And it does read as a sort of floral bitterness. It's more light on the tip in the center of your tongue. It's less earthy, more on like the back sides of your tongue, but it doesn't taste like chamomile. It doesn't taste like flowers. It doesn't taste like honey. It tastes like a very sweet, very lame wine. I'm getting some of the herbs on the nose, the sort of herbalness that I was getting from uh, the Vibrante and that I find in their vermouths. But I don't, I don't get chamomile, which is like the one thing they denote here. And I can't pick out a specific botanical that they could be using. I'm not getting juniper or any kind of root or anything. It just tastes like wine, like, like wine grapes. It's it's disappointing, if anything, because these things pair no comparison to what the market already provides in alcoholic products, um, which I mean is one of two ways to go. You can either emulate and do better without alcohol, or you can do something entirely different and not present at all like anything else that's on the market. If you were gonna make an aperitif, you had marketed one as floral and one as bitter citrus. You make the bitter citrus look red like Campari. You make the Floreal look yellow like Saint Germain. And then act as if you don't need to match what those products are. Are you kidding me, Martini and Rossi? Like you guys make good shit. Like I, I think Martini and Rossi is a fine company that makes good baseline all around like approachable products. These are approachable, sure, but they're not what I want them to be because they're not behaving the way they should. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I don't, I don't get this. I do want to give these things a fighting chance um, because I am, I, am, I, I am interested in seeing if maybe they mix well. Um, I don't know that they will. I don't think their flavors are potent enough to be worth mixing, but there's only one way to find out. So let's go ahead and make some cocktails with them. So commences our attempt to see if these uh, aperitif, no ABV aperitif things, whatever they want to call them, because I don't want to call them aperitifs, mix well. <laughs> Rephrase, let's see if these things mix well. <laughs> For the Vibrante, which is sort of, I, I, I can't really see it as anything else other than trying to be Campari, I'm going to make a Garibaldi and see if, for whatever reason, the dilution added in making a cocktail and combining it with something gives it some extra legs to stand on. For anyone who does not recall from our previous episode on the Garibaldi, it is one and a half ounces of a bitter red Italian aperitif, namely Campari, and four ounces of orange juice. Now, normally I would say you should go ahead and fresh squeeze this, but I actually ran out of oranges the other day making some French style lemonade and this orange juice here is not from Concentrate, 100% organic and 100% orange juice. So it'll fare just as well, I think, in this context. A Garibaldi needs to be frothed, so I'm going to dry shake this for about 30 seconds using a cocktail spring to accomplish that. We crack that open and take out our springs so that we can add some ice to shake again to chill and dilute. Now, a Garibaldi also gets served in a tall glass over a cube of ice, so I'm gonna use just one large cube to prevent too much dilution and to continue our agitation so that we don't lose any of that nice frothing we just accomplished. We're gonna shake with that ice for about 12, 10, 12 seconds just to chill it down. I'm gonna grab a tall Collins glass here, and into that I'm going to crack our cube of ice. And then over that ice, I'm gonna pour our cocktail. This orange juice has no pulp in it. It's been clarified, so I'm not gonna double strain it. I'm just gonna pour it straight over. 
Now, I'm not immensely happy with that wash line, uh, but that is a Garibaldi. Um, so let's go ahead and just give it a taste and see if it works. I will say the color is kind of wrong. Um, it's a bit more pale, a bit less red. Um, it's definitely like in the ballpark of where a Garibaldi should look. It's just definitely muted, kind of like flesh tone almost. Whatever, let's give it a shot. You know, <laughs> you know, wow. <laughs> okay, so it's not like amazing or anything. Um, the fact that it wasn't like super fucking boring is what's really blowing me away um, because I thought it would be, but you can taste it. It's there and it actually kind of works. It doesn't carry any of that bitter, super bitter, earthy bitter, incredibly red, bright, potently, insanely bitter flavor that Campari has that really makes a Garibaldi as good as it is. But what it is bringing is a sort of contextual flavor that is not similar at all, but one that works well in the context of orange juice. Um, it, it tastes kind of like uh, wine predominantly, you know, this, it's a wine-based product that tastes a lot like wine. Um, and it makes it taste kind of like a mimosa. But the added botanicals and bergamot oils that I don't really think I'm tasting because it's not bitter, but whatever, uh, and, and everything else that went into making this product does influence the overall presentation of the cocktail. And it works. It's not the same, but it works. <laughs> if I ordered a Garibaldi and you handed me that, I'd be pissed off because it's not a Garibaldi. But I also would be like, hey, what did you put in this? Because this is not what I expected. And I'm kind of puzzled more than I am mad. <laughs> if somebody were to say, make me a cocktail with this instead of alcohol, I would actually think it would work. You could use this in some stuff uh, and make something good. You know, I think, I think it's actually really, really possible to take this and make something interesting. Um, which is like, sorry, just like a big thing for me. I've never really understood how you're supposed to use no ABV alternatives. Um, and this one is a pretty good example, I think, um, which is kind of stunning. So not a total loss. Um, let's go ahead and see if the Floreal um, works as well. I'm, I'm a little surprised, <laughs> shit. Now, if someone were to ask me uh, how I would present a floral aperitif I'm gonna buy itself in a cocktail, I'd say I'd probably reach for a spec that makes it a spritz. So we're gonna try that with our Floreal. I'm gonna follow the spec for a, an Aperol spritz, which is three ounces of uh, Aperol, um, three ounces about of uh, sparkling wine, like a Brut or a Prosecco, uh, and then two ounces of club soda to top. Um, now, obviously I can't <laughs> use, uh, I can't use Sparkling wine, it defeats the purpose here. Uh, and I think it would actually kind of cover up the flavors of something that is already a wine product. Instead, I'm going to use ginger beer, which I think is gonna add a complimentary flavor here. I'm gonna rebalance it so that uh, this is just two ounces and the club soda is three ounces. So the ginger flavor is not overpowering. It's a little sacrilegious, but uh, an April spritz is built in a tall wine glass filled with ice. <laughs> Be as pissed off about that as you want. That's how you do it. Uh, and that's how I'm going to do this particular spritz. I'm gonna fill our glass with ice and I'm gonna do three ounces of our Floreal spirit alternative, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> Something about the way this product is makes me not want to call it a fucking spirit alternative. It doesn't read, like, like it's clear it is, but it doesn't, doesn't give me anything that I want in as an alternative to an aperitif like it's supposed to be. I, I'm still so torn. I'm gonna pointlessly and pedantically measure out two ounces of ginger beer, and then I'm just gonna eyeball some club soda to lengthen to a decent looking wash line. Should be about three ounces. It's probably about three ounces. I'm gonna give this a gentle stir. Do not try this at home. I just don't have a spoon over here. All right. Let's try our Floreal spritz. 
I'm less impressed. <laughs> uh, this this one reads um, like weak, 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 um, like bitter gingerness. Um, it doesn't really work. <laughs> Not for lack of trying, that is. It just it just doesn't taste like. Uh, it really doesn't taste almost like anything. Yeah, you get some of that bitterness from the app, from the, you know, the Martini and Rossi alternative. And it's actually a bit more pronounced here. Um, I and now I would say it, it's presenting slightly more floral in the way that it is bitter. Um, but I don't think it's, it, this is the right way to present it, actually. Uh, I'm gonna go back to the drawing board real quick, hold on. So I've strained off um, our original beverage. I'm gonna add a little bit of extra ice to take up some space. And I'm just gonna see if maybe this one is not meant to be covered up with other flavors. Lengthening it seemed to work. It kept its bitterness, but the ginger notes, I think, kind of knocked it out because this is not a very strong flavor. So let's, let's see what it does if we just do a healthy pour of it. Maybe, you know, 50-50, maybe one part to two of that in club soda. I have a feeling that this is probably gonna work better, but you know we're we're splitting hairs at this point, man. Again, quick non non uh, non uh, condone stir here, <laughs> and let's give this new Floreal spritz, you know, a bit more straightforward, a taste. You know that that I can see. That I think actually kind of works. It's got this very like noticeable. Um, floral bitterness. It doesn't, again, it doesn't taste like chamomile, like it says it does. It doesn't taste like any detectable botanicals. It tastes like wine covered up in floral bitterness. But um, that being said, it's actually not horribly unapproachable. I think it actually works kind of okay. Um, and like to an extent that I wouldn't be mad to serve this to somebody, but I would ask why. You know, at this point, just drink a ginger beer. You're gonna be more impressed by that than you are this. Um, this is kind of kind, kind of pointless, honestly. Um, it kind of sucks. Because it has no strong flavor, man. It's just like, it. this and the Vibrante are both weak, weak fucking excuses for aperitifs. Like, they're not, they're not good aperitifs. They suck. And I, I don't think it has anything to do with them being non-alcoholic. I think it has to do with them trying to be approachable. You know, so mass markets can drink them. But at the same time, aperitifs are not mass market approachable. <laughs> if you handed somebody who's not used to drinking bitter, you know, bracing, botanical, and eccentric citrus, uh, you know, like, like an Amari, like an Amaro, uh, on the rocks of somebody as a pre-dinner drink and expected them to enjoy it, you're full of shit and stupid as hell. Uh, so why you would make the worst aperitif you could for what aperitifs are for the sake of making something that is not like curbside, street side appeal worthy. I, bruh, I'm fucking losing my mind. <laughs> I, don't, I, I just don't get it. I, I just don't think I get it, you know? It's, it sucks because I want to. <laughs> oh man, this has just gone off the rails entirely. <laughs> Okay, so what have we learned? What we've learned is that Martini and Rossi brought these non, like no ABV, non-alcoholic spirit alternatives to market as aperitifs, I think to maintain their sort of traditional fortified wine product line and imagery. Uh, and because aperitif is Italian and so is Martini and Rossi and it seemed appropriate from a marketing perspective. But on the side of actually making the spirit alternative, they've made something that isn't really an aperitif and isn't really good outside of that context. As aperitifs, they're weak, they carry no distinct flavors, they do not taste like what they say like they taste like, uh, they are sweet, bad quality wine products that taste mostly like herbs that they don't say are in there. As spirit alternatives, I don't see them being useful. I don't see them being approachable, um, which is ironic because they're definitely moving away from aperitif notes that 
would make them a- appeal to someone, uh, but in a way that makes them worth it for no one. <laughs> and honestly, I I don't know what they were going for. I don't know what the purpose of all this was, and I don't know why <laughs> they would waste the time. Frankly, it kind of stuns me that they even care to try this, because why? I said at the top of this that no major liquor company had invested in making an alternative for their product that was no ABV. And I didn't really ask myself why. The reason why is because it sucks when they do that. <laughs> These companies are good at making alcohol. That's what they specialize in. It's the whole point of their business model. It's the whole point of their product. To get you fucking drunk. And also to taste good and be useful in cocktails and all that other stuff. But really, the point is, they want to get you drunk. When they can't do that, they don't know what they're doing. That very baseline note of, we have to make alcohol, how do we make this alcohol taste good, is exactly what they rely on to make their product. And they can't rely on that here, and that's why they fall flat, quite literally. Flat in flavor, flat in approach, flat in appearance, flat in utility. They're not good. You might disagree with me, like this is entirely a subjective point. I don't think these are good products. Um, at least, you know, actually, let me rephrase that. This Floreal crap sucks. This is useless. This has no potent anything to it, even when it is just this and like soda water over ice. It's lame, droning, pointless, empty bitterness. The Vibrante, while it sucks on its own and is really disappointing compared to what it says it's supposed to be and what it is clearly appearing to be, which is Campari, by the way, um, it actually worked kind of well in a cocktail setting where Campari was the primi- you know, the primary spirit. It's not the same, it's not even remotely similar, but it worked. And that makes me think that something like this would work if you were to make something like a non-alcoholic Enzoni using a gin alternative. You know, that might actually work. That might actually be approachable, and it might be something that people can like. It is definitely not to my palate, that is for sure, but I can respect that this one exists. I would say this one has a right to continue existing. <laughs> this one does not without some heavy, you know, heavy editing done to it. So if you like this look at this random ass product I found that I didn't know existed and still don't know why it does, go ahead and click that like button down below and subscribe to catch more episodes of the show. I make one every single Friday and then sometimes on Tuesdays. So if you wanna know when they come out, you can go ahead and click that bell notification next to that subscribe button and it will tell you when I make them. Additionally, I have social media. Uh, I'm on TikTok, I'm on Reddit, I'm on Instagram, I am on Tumblr. I don't use any of them very much. I'm very bad at that, but hey, that, them's the breaks. <laughs> I'm getting better at it, I promise. I'm trying to get better at it. All that said, go ahead and follow me on those socials and I will see you guys on the next episode of Mike's Hard Reviews. Um, you don't have to drink responsibly. I would say just uh, don't drink these. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you all around. <laughs> Bye-bye. I found these. The Martini and Rossi No Proof AB. The Martini and Rossi No Proof Aperitifs on today's episode of Mike's Hard Reviews. I gotta reshoot that intro. Oh man, that was bad. <laughs> Industry that is spirit lit, or rather, uh, no alcohol spirits. Fuck, I fucked it up again. I should have filmed this episode first, not the ones that have alcohol in them. Fuck.